Luna, which is a coin a lot of Bitcoin maximalists don't like, is gobbling up all the Bitcoin in sight. They now have about 40,000 Bitcoin in their treasury, which is worth like $1.7 billion at this point. Every few weeks, they're buying a bunch of this Bitcoin to back up their stable coin, uh, basically creating a reserve so that you can use their stable coin and it's backed by something. This is something a lot of people in Ethereum ecosystem have been building with DAI and now Luna, which is big in Southeast Asia and especially in Korea, is more or less like taking on that Ethereum ecosystem, but using Bitcoin to do it. Really wild to see this. Another tangential story along with this is Bitcoin's price is not really moving, even though there's another huge Bitcoin buyer out there. So last year we saw Tesla, we saw a bunch of uh, in insurance companies like Mass Mutual buy up Bitcoin and that moved Bitcoin's price up quite a bit. This is a lot of Bitcoin being bought and the price is really just doing nothing. He doesn't care at all. Uh, I don't know why or how. I'm not a markets guy, but it's just like fascinating to, to see these huge orders and then Bitcoin's price doesn't budge. Zach, I want to get your take on this, especially the first part. When you see these altcoins that are basically going after Ethereum's playbook, but using Bitcoin to do it, like what are you getting from that and from your uh, reporters and from the people with the contacts and sources you talk with? What are, what are they getting out of this story? Okay, hear me out. I think this is a community acquisition play, right? This is Terra saying, all right, we want the Bitcoiners to be with us. And they're they're making a bet that not only will this be a sound reserve asset for the long haul, it'll also buy them the good graces of the Bitcoin community. Uh, this was sort of the case uh, a little bit earlier in this cycle with, uh, with LFG making these buys. And we're also interestingly seeing it with Avalanche as well, right? They committed yeah. you know, Terraform Labs, which is the firm that uh, spun up the Terra blockchain, and also the Luna Foundation Guard. They each chipped in $100 million to buy some AVAX, which is the native token of the Avalanche blockchain. That one, I think, is uh, even uh, an even more clear example of sort of this community acquisition approach that uh, Do Kwon and Luna and the Terra ecosystem seems to be pursuing here, right? They're saying, okay, we're going to create sort of a strategic alliance between some of these chains. We're also going to create sort of like, I don't know, like an, an affinity between Bitcoin and Luna. And I think it's something that will probably serve them well in the long run. And, uh, you know, kind of speaks, I think, to the tribal nature of crypto, right? These are communities that care about some of these assets and building bridges sort of in the community sense between these two tribes or three tribes now that we're talking with here with uh, with the addition of AVAX to the mix. I think it's something that's going to be really interesting uh, to see unfold, right? We're going to have uh, sort of uh, sort of these, these little allies, al this is like allyships that are happening between these different communities. So I think um, in the big picture, that's what it is. I think the Bitcoin thing is certainly about a reserve asset play that uh, may or may not outperform uh, other, other assets that would back these projects over time. But um, it's interesting to see. And I'd be curious to know if there's going to be other sort of allies, allies ships brokered uh, between the Terra folks and other commu crypto communities out there in the form of some of these big buys. Uh, Tyrone, I'm going to toss it to you. I mean, from the Bitcoin angle, yeah, why, why, no, why, no, you know, why no price action? Why no response from the market after some of these big buys? I think there's a lot of, <clears throat> there's a lot of things at play here. I think one, you look at if you, the long-term holders of Bitcoin are continuing to accumulate I think retail is washed out, right? So you don't have a lot of the retail action. They've run away. And I think we're in this period and phase now where if you look at Bitcoin, it's correlation to traditional markets is behaving just like that. So it's responding to news and there really hasn't been any news. And those that are loosely following the space don't know what the hell Luna is. <laughs> so they're not going to buy or react off of that. The other thing here that is really interesting is the regulatory environment. As the stable coin space starts to evolve, there is this regulatory overhang that is happening right now. So I think that is causing a lot of pause from the institutional investor, if you will, that is moving markets. And lastly, I think we're setting up for a really interesting um, you know, battle, if you will, between the MakerDAO and the Luna folks. So there's a lot of things at play here where everyone is just kind of hands off. And seeing what happens and i think you know the price action in bitcoin is reflected in that it's just going to sit there like a pet rock until something happens that everyone feels is going to you know call for an explosive move this isn't really it don't call bitcoin a pet rock that's so insulting to, to thousands of investors no, I, have a, I have a love affair with bitcoin <laughs> everyone knows that that's it's gold it's just gold. sitting there right now don't, like do something yeah, <laughs> Tyrone, we'll, we'll do like a character like persona one day, but you know, Will, he's the resident Bitcoin Maxi, so please don't trigger got him. Got it, got uh, it. No, listen, I'm with him. I, I love Bitcoin. 
<laughs> I know, but George Fair. isn't here all the time. Yeah, and no so George. when he's not yeah. here, you got to fill that role. How did I become the Bitcoin man? Actually, as the Ethereum reporter. You got like, your, you got, like the Jack Mahler's like, hat look with the hair coming down right now. So even visually, <laughs> you're this? channeling Bitcoin Very Maxi popular for it. white guys in their early 20s. I will, coming I will out of Miami. That. Yeah, it's big time. It's a strong <laughs> look. <laughs> Jen, LFG, what are your what are your thoughts? Is LFG going to be the savior that Bitcoin needs here uh, in the in, in this market? I mean, I don't know. I had a bunch of questions that all of you guys answered really well. I mean, when I read this article, I I thought. Wow, now they have more exposure to to Bitcoin than Tesla, and we haven't seen any movement in the market. And to what Tyrone was saying, my initial thought was, yeah, every other time we've seen this, we've had this big splashy news, mainstream companies, Michael Saylor all over the news talking about why it's so important to have, you know, to continue to buy Bitcoin and have that long-term strategy. And and with this, if you don't follow the space quite closely, you don't really, you don't really know what's going on. So I think maybe that's what happened there. I am in no way, shape, or form a markets expert, but that's what I thought when I read the story this morning.